Hey guys, so thank you for joining me here uh, today. As I said in my previous video, I was going to do a tutorial on how to create a uh, 3D wargame terrain, or how I created my 3D wargame terrain, as you can see here. Um, now, the one I'm going to do today is going to be more of a, a winter theme so it's going to be a little bit different I'm going to try and cover all the bases uh, such as water um, the grass or in this case it's going to be snow how I did shrubs trees uh, rocks everything um, and then Today, uh, in this first video, I'm going to have to break it into several different videos. So this first video is going to be about building your base and getting this structure all set up so that you can actually um, start doing all the cool stuff. So let me get this out of the way. I'm going to throw it in the background here. Um, I'm going to start by talking about uh, the base of the terrain and what you can use. Right here, this is a uh, foam core. It's about a quarter inch or eighth of an inch thick. You can get this. Um, I got this one. It's a two foot by three foot uh, foam core board. I got it from the dollar store for a dollar twenty-five. You can get it at like an art art store uh, frame shop, but they're gonna charge you like six bucks a sheet. So um, I would recommend trying to find a large, a very large um, dollar store to pick that up. Now here is uh, some basic foam. This is packing foam that uh, I got from a, a TV box uh, just to cover the TV screen. It's, uh, it's really quite flimsy stuff, breaks apart very easily, it has the large kind of bubble bubble um, foam which this stuff isn't the best but uh, it is pliable and very workable so this is some other stuff that you can use what um, well before I go there uh, here's some other packing material that you can use uh, you can break stuff apart especially you can really use the shape something like this right here uh, you could use that as like a pool to uh, pour your water material in. So you can use the, the shapes to your advantage. That's how I did the bridge uh, in that one video. I had one that had a rounded piece coming off of it and I just chopped that out and built a bridge out of it. But we'll get more into that later. This stuff you can get for free um, basically by checking recycling bins um, or checking by the garbage bins at a, at a, like a superstore uh, Walmart kind of strip mall area. If you go to where they have the garbage bins, you can usually find this stuff for free. No point in, in purchasing it. If you wanted to go higher end and get some really good material, this stuff here um, is the same as this flimsy kind of packing foam, except it's a harder material. It's a lot firmer. Um, like, I could if I really wanted to rip this off but it's going to be difficult and um, this stuff's going to be a lot easier to work with a lot easier to shape and you're not going to get little uh, pieces floating off and staticking to you like this other packing material this stuff you can get at a hobby shop it's going to be very expensive though uh, a little sheet like this at the two inch uh, thick or the one and a half inch. I'm not sure how thick that is. It's going to cost you probably around six bucks for a little sheet like this. I got this for free on Kijiji. I got a whole boatload of it for free. So uh, that would be another choice is to check something like that. Your third option or fourth option, I don't know what we're at now. This stuff here um, is construction grade foam board. And if you know anyone that works in construction, uh, you can have them check the uh, the bins or if they see anyone using this stuff at a construction site and they have leftover scraps, just tell them to grab it for you and take it home. I got 
probably about 20 feet of this stuff for free from my brother-in-law. Um, so you can get all this stuff for free if you know the right places to look. There's no point in spending a lot of money to build this structure. So these, and this stuff is really firm. It's really hard to kind of shape and cut. So the construction grade you might want to stay away from just because it's, it's difficult to manipulate. So what I decided to do was for my base, I just cut out an 8x8 eight eight, uh, of the foam board and this is going to be my uh, base level that's going to go on the table and then I'm going to build up from there. Now one thing to note is that my game um, these pieces that I'm making are for a standalone board. Um, each of the pieces tie together and create a plain board for me. This isn't like Warhammer or some other war game where this uh, is only a, a small part that is played on the table and you're measuring with tape measures and and walking up onto the terrain this is for a standalone board so next I took uh, my quarter inch uh, styrofoam here and that's going to be going right on top of the base la base layer and that's going to be basically this is going to be my my lowest floor level that I'll have on all my pieces and then I'll build up from from there on everything else that I do. Now this other, this other piece I um, hopefully you can see that there we go I cut a ramp on here and all I did was measure the lines took the exacto knife cut in from the side on an angle and slid down and here's the other piece right here that I cut out from it and make sure you keep all these little pieces because they will be very useful um, with building other terrain pieces. So never throw any of your scraps away. Uh, but I'll go over more of that later. Um, so this is going to be the base piece right here. And then all the other pieces are going to attach. I'm doing a winter mountain terrain. So this is something I've never done before, and what, I, what I've done here is I've taken some newspaper type stuff, I stuffed it with more newspaper, and I'm going to be putting this up on uh, the edges to create sort of a mountain, and then I'm going to plaster over the whole thing, and I'm, this is just to give me the basic idea and shape that I want, and I have a bunch of these, and I can put them however whichever direction I want. Once I plaster over them, I'll squish them down to different heights and uh, sizes. And I'm not sure how it's going to look because I've never done this before. But that's kind of the idea that I wanted to go with this one. Um, and these are all going to line just the very edge right here so not to take up a lot of the plane space. And I'm going to do that on all my pieces so that it's going to be all these mountains towering up everywhere. Um, and then you're running in between. So that's the idea for this piece. One thing I wanted to make clear was when you're doing angled pieces like this, um, walkways for them to walk up, you want to be very careful of how sharp the angle is. This is very low. I'm not sure the exact angle, but when you put a piece on here, and this is a, these are from my Doom game because I don't have my Super Dungeon Explorer with me right now. Um, this is a, a 30 millimeter and uh, a 50 right there and this guy here is an 80 just to give you a, a size reference there but this is a very insignificant slope if I take this cutout piece and I put that on the slope as well now we're looking at about a 45 degree angle and if I put this guy up here depending on the direction I face him uh, he can and cannot stand. Uh, put him like this, he's going to fall over. So you need to be very careful of the the angle of slopes that you put in there. So all I'm going to do after at this point um, is glue these down uh, to where I want. I'm going to glue down the uh, these pieces as well just to get them on there. And then I just need to plaster over this with plaster cloth and uh, 
from there we're going to start painting and, and assembling and, and creating something like this so uh, let's get to it okay so I've assembled everything I've glued it all together into uh, one piece here and this is kind of the basic look of uh, my little terrain piece and uh, now it's time to plaster this and uh, so, so we can uh, get to work on it this is a good example right here of what I was talking about with saving your little pieces um, these guys right here are little scraps from when I made my other four pieces and I just kinda threw them in uh, to give me kind of a little more of a mountain look there when I cover over all these large spires I'm gonna have some small ones in between to make it look more mountainous and rocky so now all there is to uh, do really is uh, plaster and after I plaster I'm gonna have to let it sit and uh, basically dry so this will probably be the um, the only video for today and then uh, tomorrow or, or later on in the week I'll finish up with the the rest of uh, the tutorial of painting and applying everything so the plaster that I'm using is uh, this stuff right here is just called plaster cloth and it comes in a uh, 8 inch by uh, 8 foot length and I've taken that and I've here's the big roll right here um, and I've taken it and I've cut it into lots of little strips here I've just got a, a ton of little strips and I have a couple different sizes too I have some little tiny ones and these ones are for doing some more finicky work uh, as we're covering harder to get places so what you're gonna do at this point uh, very simple I'm not gonna show you the whole thing guys but um, basically you take one little strip of this stuff and this is basically like dried plaster onto a little terry cloth type thing and there's a bumpy side and a, and a flat side, smooth side. You always want the bumpy side up. And you're just going to dip it in some water. It's not going to sit in there for very long. You just want to get it wet. And then you're going to place it over top like so. I'm going to actually have it hanging over the edges a little bit so the edges get plastered as well and once you kind of have it positioned where you want you're just gonna rub back and forth and what this is gonna do is um, all those bumps are gonna smooth out because the bumps are the plaster and you're basically moving all that plaster off and smearing it over the cloth and over everything and that's what's going to solidify your your piece and uh, make it nice and hard so it's not going to fall apart or or break so you're going to go over this if you need a little bit of extra water you can dunk your fingers in the water go over it again and you want to kind of get rid of all the little cloth hatch patterns in here but if you're going over top of it again with with kind of a grass you're not gonna see the land anyways I guess it depends on what exactly you're doing but um, that's one piece on there anyways just like that and I just need to go over everything uh, going over the corners and rounded edges and all these peaks and stuff are gonna be a little bit trickier but um, that's just something you have to play around with yourself I can't really talk about how that's gonna how to do that and stuff you just have to experiment so that's really it uh, I'm gonna finish up plastering this whole thing let it sit and uh, my next video will be covering painting it and doing all the fancy terrain stuff so I hope you guys enjoyed this video and uh, we'll see you again in part two